this episode of Horse Shelter Heroes. The buyout big rescue day is tomorrow. The auction is also tomorrow. She found this little guy laying on this one who got hit by a car in the ditch crying. Um, he has a pretty horrific and pronounced wound. You must be aware that the fair people don't um, like what you're doing. She's a stray. She's been hanging around this lady's house for a couple days. Um, but she has this big hole on her neck. Six. 1,600 pounds, 1651, wow. There is a petition we created that has nearly 20,000 signatures. You don't want to miss a single second of us. Shelter. Today they have got me in the training barn and we are cleaning out the uh, the holding areas in here from the snowstorm where we've had to put everything into barns. So we're going to get that cleaned out, desanitized, and it'll be back in working order before dark. While Corey is finishing up pressure washing the training barn, we are going to be getting Jethro out today. We got Jethro out today to see if he rides. Uh, he does ride. I've noticed a little bit of lameness in his right hind quarter. Dr. Lydia is going to take further x-rays and see what we can do to get him back on track and hopefully we'll be able to continue his training and get him adopted out if everything goes well with him. The buyout big rescue day is tomorrow. The auction is also tomorrow and we have our dealer license. We were really hoping to go back to the auction this month. Um, the USDA was doing a full investigation and everything was looking fine, but now the USDA has... Um, yeah, yeah, so I, talk, I talked to the USDA investigator and he said that he's done, but now his supervisor has told him they have to wait for the Tennessee Department of Agriculture to finish their investigation. I asked him what investigation, he says he doesn't know because they've blocked him from, like they won't communicate with him about it. So Tennessee's dragging their feet, not surprised, he sent me the business card of the person who is handling the investigation with Tennessee Department of Agriculture. And of course, it's the guy who first drove up and told us we couldn't be protesting in front of the auction. The very same guy. So it's um, a good old boys club over there. We've been going to this auction for nearly a decade. We know the type of horses that go there and we know that they need help. And basically they, you know, chased off the rescuer. So now the kill buyer can go there and get horses for whatever price he wants. So. The buyout, it looks very, very busy uh, tomorrow. Um, we will be over in Cookville is the current plan, um, doing a buyout over there as well. Unless we get more funding, we'll be only able to offer $200 a horse um, because we already have over 30 horses coming in here scheduled tomorrow. So it is gonna be very, very, very busy. Basically the rumors that we've heard is just absolutely horrifying. The rumor is basically that um, we went in and somehow took advantage of somebody who was doing a gelding operation. We gutted the horse and we did the whole thing to try to just be a, a ploy in donation fundraising. And that's the rumor that, that we've heard out there, which is absolutely ridiculous. Just shows the level that these folks will go to to try to keep rescuers out of auctions and um you know like our vet was there she treated the horse as soon as we owned the horse so we could treat it and um the horse was humanely euthanized so today we're submitting freedom of information act requests for all of the information regarding this investigation because tax dollars go to fund uh -huh. these guys so freedom of information act We'll know if the rumors are true yep. that are being spread. 
um, and get it's to It's pretty the amazing what it. you can get with the Freedom of Information Act. So hopefully their, their custodian of records doesn't drag their feet on this. We can get it quickly and see what is going on over in Cookville. Um, regardless of all that, we're, we're still able to help a lot of horses through the buyout program. It was nearly 200, um, you know, last year, and then we're already 14 that have come in this month, and then we have all these ones tomorrow. So we're doing everything we possibly can, but we need your support, we need your donations, because we're being asked to help a lot of horses that would go to slaughter without us. So please, please donate. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, because when we get this information, it's gonna be very interesting. So I'm just getting some surgical drape material ready to go. We want to be as sterile as possible, but our standards for a neuter are a little bit different from a spay because we're not opening the abdomen. We are neutering Ralph. He's a very good boy. We're doing a pre-surgical prep and we're gonna alternate between using isopropyl alcohol and chlorhexidine. And we're gonna start clean and kinda of go dirty, and we're gonna do it at least three times. This helps reduce the bacterial numbers on the skin. When they're under anesthesia, they're not able to blink, so we wanna make sure those eyes don't get irritated or dried out. We just got done with Ralph's castration and he's doing well. We're just waiting for him to wake up. We are getting updated pictures of the dogs from the seizure case just to show their progression from the day we got them up until now. I have got some uh, updated photos of the puppies. So we can upload these and have some new photos of the puppies. I got a call from my girlfriend. Her daughter was on Piney. Um, she found this little guy laying on this one who got hit by a car in the ditch crying. There's three of them, three more that ran off into the woods that they weren't able to get. And this is seven, eight, nine dogs from the same street today where people are dumping dogs. That's a little boy. Oh, I don't think he's gonna make it. I didn't think he'd even make it here. Yeah, yeah his he tummy's funky pretty right tight. There. Right where your thumbs are. Yeah, he probably has a pelvic fracture, but I'm trying not to manipulate him too much to hurt him. So they just brought in this emergency hit by car puppy. He's very hypovolemic, hypothermic. He's in a lot of pain. He's very dull mentation. His abdomen's very tight. Um, so we think the last act of kindness is probably the best choice for him because he's in a lot of pain and he's not doing very well. So we are in quarantine right now and we are working on getting temps on all of the horses that are ready to come down. That way we can figure out if they are in fact ready to come down. Uh, we're going to try to keep these guys separate as possible. Um, we're just going to try to run around one at a time so we can get them in the chute get their temp scan, get them looked at in any way they need to be looked at, and then we're gonna separate the boys from the girls. One oh one two, so he's fine. That's a good boy. Don't see any nose boogies? Okay. Um, I think he's a stud colt, yeah. He's the one that's on our list for castration anyway.
totally fine. Can I touch you? Is touching okay? Good job. Uh, we're gonna move the horses down to the main part of the facility now. They have all been cleared. Um, they don't have any sickness or temperatures or anything like that. So they're gonna go down and they are gonna be in the training program. We've helped a lot of animals already this month, but today is our big rescue mission buyout day. Jace and I have always been the lead in rescues for the last 20 something years. We've turned that over to Corey. Um, so now he will be the lead rescuer. Um, so he's he's got a lot on his plate this year, uh, but I know he'll do a great job. So. He is actually in charge of today's rescue and we're here to assist him. Basically what's happening today is people are bringing horses to our facility um, to utilize the buyout program instead of taking the auction. Potentially we could get 40 horses brought to our facility today that would have been intercepted from going to the auction and that's huge. So we have the rescue team here that Corey's appointed uh, to accept those horses in and then a group of us are going to um, actually the fairgrounds uh, in Cookville and we will be doing a buyout at the fairgrounds. So we'll be offering $200 per horse. If we get more donations in through the day, we will be off able to offer $450 per horse, which would intercept more from going to the auctions. It's gonna be a very busy day and Corey's got a lot on his plate today, but I know he'll do a good job. So right now I am hooking up the trailers. We are going to Cookville for a buyout program. Uh, we're gonna be actually set up at the fairgrounds out in Cookville. We're bringing both of the big trailers. We're never sure what we can get while we're out there, but I wanna be completely prepared. Also, as of yesterday, I have accepted a new title. I'm still gonna be training horses, but my new title is lead rescuer, so I will be overseeing and in charge of everything that has to do with rescuing animals here at the shelter, whether it's going to auctions, to get horses, the buyout program, going on seizure cases, or just animal rescues in general. So, we probably won't need both of the big trailers. This is one of those situations where it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. I'm making sure that we have everything that we're gonna need. Whenever we go to these places, we do expect horses in rough shape. So um, I'm getting stuff for pain management and wound care that Dr. Lydia is uh, setting me up with and kind of telling me how to dose each thing. And we will be contacting uh, Dr. Lydia and Dr. Gina about what um, is going on, so they will be prescribing whatever we give to the animals that we get in this buyout. All right, so we are ready to hit the road. We've got a couple different groups going. Caitlin and I will be at the fairgrounds with Faye filming. Tawny and Jason are, are gonna be at one spot holding flyers and signs. And then Don, Jordan, and Haley will be at the other spot holding signs. So I believe we're all ready to go. Tawny and Jason are gonna start heading out a little bit later than this, but um, our group is ready now. We are headed up to the quarantine barn. We have a load of horses here for our uh, rescue. And we are headed up there to unload them and start doing intake on them. Well, I was down in the office uh, getting ready to uh, head out uh, for our big rescue mission. So I was down in the office, but we have our first load of buyout horses. So I drove up here real quick to 
to see them. And um, this guy has a very nice trailer. I'd love to have one like this at the shelter. But anyways, uh, yeah, busy, busy start to the day. First group of horses got here um, safely. Everyone was up in the trailer. We did put a big emphasis on that to anyone bringing horses here. Um, there was an Amish man who brought horses through the buyout last year. I mean, we, we don't have control. Like a lot of times we don't have information, but there were way too many horses in his trailer. We've made it pretty clear. We don't want to have horses coming in packed trailers where horses are falling down and things. I mean, accidents do happen, but overloading a trailer is asking for an accident. So. Pins are kind of muddy. Uh, it's These horses won't be in here long term. This is just a quick holding facility with winter and rain comes mud. They're gonna be out in pastures as soon as we can get them out in pastures. Uh, watching them unload, there's definitely a lot of horses with problems. And through the buyout program, and if you watch my podcast with Carrie who um, launched the buyout program years ago, horses that come in through the buyout program a lot of them do need the last act of kindness. So we have two awesome veterinarians here at our facility full time and to see to the needs of each and every horse. But one horse does have a wrapped leg and hard to say exactly what's going on with that. Um, you know, it might have, you know, sometimes horses will get their legs stuck in a fence and it will actually pull their skin off and somebody just pulls it up and wraps it. I mean, we don't know. So once the vets uh, start doing their triage, I'm sure they're going to want to know what's under there as much as I do. He was biting the panel for um, endorphin release and that's a way for them to kind of get like a small high. It's a learned behavior called a stereotypy and uh, it's a bad behavior, but that's what he's trying to do is trying to pacify himself in this stressful environment. No. His front right especially is like twisted and there's something going on there. He's huge and he should probably be like at least 1,200 pounds and he's like almost 900 pounds. He's so skinny. Well, I have to go. This feels really weird leaving intake, but uh, ever since the auction kicked us out after we talked about what happened to one of the horses there, uh, we're still working on trying to get back in. Auction rescues have turned into very interesting, huge rescue mission days where we're intercepting horses. So I'm headed over to Cookville to try to intercept some horses over there, leaving this all in very capable hands. Dr. Lydia, Dr. Gina, and Kimberly, and Troy, they've all got this, but it does feel very weird walking away from this because I feel like I should be here, but it's all part of helping more animals. If we didn't go, we might not be able to help more. So bye. Bye. Are you ready? <laughs> well, I'm not a vet, so I can't give any diagnoses, but he does seem super lame. Um, he's got like some twisting in his front right leg and an old scar. And the front left hoof looks very strange. It's kind of like very weirdly shapen. Um, he's super skinny. He's super sweet. Always the nice ones with a lot of problems. People take advantage of them. Oh, he's only three and a half. He's only three and a half. Yeah. Those shoes are horrible. Way too small, way too far forward. Like I almost wonder if somebody did a horrible shoe job and he had an active founder in response to the shoes. Did you see these shoes? We want to take x-rays of the horse's feet. Okay. Well, good, yeah. Unfortunately, the x-ray machine, it, it's such a nice little x-ray machine. It, um, it doesn't like to always cooperate. Do you know what a cookie is? medical assessment. You got to see if they eat cookies or not. It's important. We are going to take digital radiographs of his 
front feet to see what's going on within the hoof capsule. The conclusion is, due to the active reaction going on in his feet, he has a laminitic episode and he has sunk or rotated severely his uh, coffin bone. So he's unfortunately going to have to have a last act of kindness just to keep him from being super painful. My goodness. So this sweet gelding is at least 25 or 26 years old. Um, his teeth look great, which is why his body condition score probably looks so amazing. And unfortunately, um, this horse was out there kind of bullying other horses. He seemed a little painful. We gave him some pain medication and some sedative and we were able to get the wrap off his leg. And um, he has a pretty, horrific and pronounced wound on this right hind leg. The smell is pretty pronounced, so I think we have some advanced infection. But unfortunately, horses like to make proud flesh, which is just excessive granulation tissue. Granulation is a normal part of wound healing, but horses make too much granulation tissue. And when that happens normally, we can go in and we can just surgically resect that tissue and then get the wound to contract more. But in this case, it's so progressive that it's made this large bulbous area and there's not enough skin left and way too much granulation tissue present for us to resect it surgically even if we had enough skin. Um, sometimes we can do skin grafts but again none of that's going to work in the presence of infection. So this poor guy it's amazing that he's not septic. It does look like somebody tried really hard with him. His bandage was actually pretty appropriately done. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if the owners of this horse have really tried to provide appropriate care, but without that surgical intervention, sometimes we just can't manage these at home. So at his age, even though he looks so great, that leg's gotta be really, really uncomfortable for him. I think the last act of kindness is um, our only way forward. Unfortunately, we just don't have tools available to treat, to treat that leg at this stage. The next load of horses is here, so I have to move all of these guys that we haven't had a chance to look at yet down there. Um, we pulled out the ones that seemed the most medically critical, and um, we're getting ready for the next group. So horses are obligate nasal breathers, and if they have inflammation or something up in the front that means they don't breathe, you can put a tracheostomy in the trachea. And this horse is breathing through the trachea right here, but you're supposed to maintain that airway. So we need to prioritize this one. This horse has a hole in her neck and Dr. Lydia is trying to clip around it to get a better view of it to see like what it looks like better than what we can see right now. I think this mare has a lot of things that I'm very concerned about, but initially we thought she was in respiratory distress and she's actually not. Her respiratory rate is normal. Her mucous membrane color is good and normal. Her capillary refill time is normal. So she's well hydrated and she's perfusing appropriately. I don't know what her long-term prognosis is because we don't know why she needed a tracheostomy tube to begin with. So we'd like to put her on pretty close vet watch. She doesn't show any signs of infection today. Um, I think it would be great to take some radiographs of her head to see if she had a skull fracture or something of that nature. Um, she is a little bit older, but she seems to be stable. She's not in any distress. So we're gonna um, do some more di diagnostics and keep a really close eye on her. Uh, here comes another trailer. Not present on this side. 
Pupil area response is normal. Okay, so one of the main indicators of inflammation in the anterior chamber of a horse's eye is called flare. That's actually the medical term for it. And it looks like a sparkly constellation light show. So if you look on this side, flare is not present. When we look back through, we see a little bit of cloudiness. So this horse has cataracts on both eyes, but we don't see kind of a shiny glimmery effect. And on the other side, hopefully you can see it on your camera too. The back of her eye through her pupil, it's a bunch of tiny little glittery spots that move around. Can you see that? Flare indicates inflammation inside the eyeball itself. Unfortunately, this load, we've had a quite a few really older horses. This mare is probably closer to 25 or 26. Um, she's very sweet if you're up here and offering her a treat, but anytime we touch anything, she's pretty painful and reactive. Um, you can see by the way she's standing, she's holding her hind legs really close together and kind of leaning back. She has a lot of pain in her lumbar spine um, and sacral area, and she is very, hesitant to having us touch or palpate it. She has a grade six out of six heart murmur, which is the most severe. We grade heart murmurs from one to six. Um, she also has evidence of a progressive inflammatory condition in, in both eyes, but especially in the left eye, there's evidence of it being active. So that can build pressure up in the eye and cause blindness and also pain. So unfortunately, all of these things together mean that she doesn't have a very good prognosis, especially cardiac. We never want them to have a cardiac event and pass while we're not there. So we're gonna um, recommend that she be given the last act of kindness. So we're about to wrap up for lunch and then come back and finish the second half. This Cremello mare back here, she has a really questionable looking right hind. Um, so we're also concerned that she might be pregnant. So she's gonna be next after lunch. I'm heading out to, to pick up a horse that someone needs to rescue, and I'm pretty sure I know how to get there. I, I looked at the directions. Unfortunately, my GPS quit working, so I'm gonna have to try to go off my memory, but I should be able to find it. I think, yeah, I turn left here. It's dirt road. I don't, man, I think, I think I know where I'm going. It was pretty simple directions, but Here's another T and I really don't know which way to go. I guess I'll call him and ask. No signal, you gotta be kidding me. Maybe there'll be signal outside. There's just no signal here. Ah, but I have a satellite phone with me thanks to sat123.com. That's right. If you go to sat123.com Horse Plus and get one of these life-saving devices, Horse Plus will earn a commission which will help us save more horses. With the power of satellite communication technology, you can reach anybody in the world from anywhere in the world. I'm going to call them up and we're going to go get that horse. This amazing satellite phone with its small yet powerful form factor delivers trusted, rugged, reliable communications all in an easy to use handset. And again, Thanks to sat123.com, I was able to get out of a sticky situation and go get that horse. Remember, if you go to sat123.com horse plus and get one of these life saving devices, horse plus will earn a commission, which will help us save more horses. So we have made it over to the fairgrounds. Um, as we were driving over to the fairgrounds, there were already two sheriff um, deputies stationed close by. So uh, we'll kind of see how this all goes once people start showing up. But shortly after we pulled in, I walked down to kind of see the road to see if I could see Tawny and Jason pulling in. And about that time, a Cookville animal enforcement officer pulled in and now they're just parked out there. It kinda looks like they're waiting and watching to see what's gonna happen over here. Or what's your plan as far as like <coughs> horses come? My plan is just to keep them on the trailer I made it. 
and I mean, I don't want to potentially put them out there. If they're difficult to catch, it's going to be just more headache and hassle for us. So as soon as they get here, if they're going to stay on the trailer until we have the paperwork filled out, we have Coggins in hand. And as soon as we have all that, we'll pull them off the trailer, get them onto our trailer, pay them and they can go. Hold on, you forgot this. <gasps> I forgot my favorite toy? Yes. I love this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. This is my favorite protesting toy. So we got uh, 20 flyers for each group. Um, Dawn and Jordan are gonna go over to the church um, and they're gonna be passing out flyers and they're also gonna be holding one of these signs saying any horse, any condition, um, skip the commission and we're offering $200 a horse. Tawny and Jason are gonna be on the other side. There's another church, but they have to walk a little bit further away from that church. We have to stay 2000 feet away at all times. Otherwise uh, we can get in trouble. I think they call it pin hooking. So we hope that some people bring us horses. We have no idea what to expect or what we're gonna get, but we really hope that we get some. Everyone has headed out to their battle stations um, and hopefully soon, if not in the next hour, um, we'll get our first horse. Hopefully, fingers crossed. <laughs> well, it's really dead. You are not usually here quite this early, but usually that parking lot is at least half full of cars and it's, it's dead. Interesting. Not a lot of people. So down the road here, we should be uh, running into, we have to be 2,000 feet away from the auction property line. So we've mapped it all out and down here is where um, we're gonna have Dawn and then our new stable hand um, down here with a sign and passing out flyers. And um, then Jason and I are gonna go back to the other end. There they are. So we're gonna pop I'll in and talk to them real quick. Um, on the side of the road, trying to intercept horses, uh, the auction is maybe about a half a mile down there. So yeah, it's a little bit down there, half um, mile, three quarter mile, something like that. But we decided to come up here because there's an intersection they have to stop and we can give them the flyer. So at least encourage them to take it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they don't but have to take it. Not too many um, horse trailers gone by yet. So. Yeah, so um, which is good. If the auction's slowing down because our buyout program is so successful, that means we're keeping horses from entering the slaughter pipeline. And that's the goal. And from everything I hear back at the shelter, they're extremely busy. That's awesome because that means that we're helping a lot of horses. So, and it's great. You know, it's kind of weird for me this morning. I walked away, you know, and here's all these horses and there's just this, you know, veterinarians and the whole medical team taking and taking these horses. And I'm like, wow. And now I can go out and try to intercept more horses. So we have an amazing team at Horse Plus and we're, we're doing what we can to intercept as many as we can from the slaughter pipeline. So pretty exciting even though it's kind of weird. I never thought I'd be rescuing horses by standing in an intersection holding flyers, but this is what the reality of horse rescue has gotten to in our day and age. You hand out flyers. You gotta be flexible. Like we don't know what we're gonna do from day to day. So, but we do whatever needs to be done to save horses. That's right. John, Isabella, Isabella please, please reverse this. So horizontal flip. Yes. I'll go whoop and I'll be flipped properly. Yes, we need that badly for this clip. <laughs> we are back from lunch and like we planned, it perfectly worked out that our Carmelo mare came in and we're gonna check her out to make sure she's either pregnant or not pregnant, and also check out that leg that's got something weird going on with it. So when examining her up here, um, we are concerned that there could be a fracture of her leg, but it may not be, it might be more soft tissue. So we're gonna sedate her with baby safe drugs and see, and take some radiographs and see what's going on. So distal femoral fracture. 
That's in that's that's crossing the joint. Yeah. All right. Let's find out if she's pregnant. It's left ovary. This little guy. I think I feel rib cage. Ah! Movement? Yeah. Okay. Cot fetal movement. I've got a rib cage. I can't quite, it's at my fingertips. I can't quite get my probe. Mm. I know, mama. I know, mama. I actually do know. I've done this four times. I love the idea of a splint. For a splint to be effective, we'd have to immobilize joint above and joint below, and our joint above is the hip. Yeah. However, she is weight bearing. She does have evidence. Look, let's look at that radiograph again. Okay. What is really important to consider is pain control. You know, like, can we provide appropriate pain control? Can we maintain quality of life for this mare? We wouldn't want to kick her out in a field, but if we're able to provide adequate analgesia until she falls. I think we should try the daily pain meds. Yeah, for And sure. see, like, if that doesn't control her pain, then we have yeah. another conversation. Yes, but, I agree. Like, okay. What are the chances that we could get her on a trailer and get her into that stall before she's all the way awake? Um, very low, but because there's no truck here that can haul the trailer. Mm. My truck might be able to pull it. It's an aluminum trailer, so the trailer itself is not that heavy. Is it a bumper pull or gooseneck? It's a bumper it pull. Okay. It can pull our tractor. Oh, it'll pull that bumper pull there. Okay. <laughs> well, this mare, unfortunately, is not halter broke and does not give well to pressure. So they're trying to create a better kind of breakaway tighter halter to help her get into the trailer safer. This little stallion in the chute um, appears to be very healthy. He's just not broken at all. So we had to confirm that he has two testicles to schedule his castration. He does. Um, we had to get an accurate age and we microchipped him and gave him a rabies vaccine and pulled blood for a Coggins test. And Kimberly climbed on top of the chute to scan and make sure he didn't have a microchip, which he did not. Good job, Kimberly. He was trying to like rear in the chute and I didn't want my hand to be smashed between him and the chute. So it was easy and nice oh, and better and safer. So right now we are addressing a very critical case. Um, she got off the trailer fine, but then she went down and stayed down and she wouldn't get up until she had quite a few pokes to try and get some blood. But um, she's up now, but she's not doing very well. She has a pretty severe heart murmur. She has like no teeth. Her top incisors are gone and her bottom incisors are worn down to nubs. So she's not doing very well. pretty much don't have any functional incisors. Yeah. We are wrapping up here in quarantine. We've had a very busy day. I actually don't know how many horses, maybe more than 40. Um, unfortunately, a lot of these horses are in really critical shape. We had multiple fractures. We have multiple severe lamenesses and really bad wounds. So what we did today was just triage and try to get the ones that were in really, really critical shape, pain medications. Um, some of them we had to separate out for the night. This one looked like he was going to go down, so we wanted him to be somewhere safe if he needed to lay down. So just kind of triage. we got a lot of work to do over the next two days. So we did end up intercepting one more animal. Um, it is a donkey, and that donkey is going to be on its way soon. Uh, as soon as it gets here, we'll get them to fill out the paperwork. We will make sure the Coggins matches, and then we will get it on our trailer, and then he'll be on his way. He is so sweet. Just go 
<laughs> We're good to go. We can load him up. <laughs> oh, I like him. <laughs> He's so cute. <laughs> All right, we got our first one here in Cookville. Um, hopefully we'll get a couple more as the day goes on. But um, we're pretty happy that we got that donkey. I want to add, he's the You're cutest good. donkey I've ever seen. <laughs> and he's so sweet. Oh, I'm so Thank excited for him. So we just had a truck drive by. They rolled down their window um, and then they took a picture of our trucks and trailer. My truck and the trailer's over here. And currently we have another truck in here right now. Um, he does have a lot of wood in the back of his truck, so maybe he's lost or something trying to find a, a job site or whatnot. Now we are completely within our rights being here. We have our dealer license. We have Coggins for the animal that we already have in custody. Um, so there really is nothing that we're doing illegal and we have this area rented, so they can't ask us to leave. Doing all right. How can I help you? Yeah. Oh, you're Glenn. Corey. <laughs> doing pretty good. How are you? Good. Uh, you're, you must be aware that the fair people don't um, like what you're doing. The fair, the ones that run the fair here. Okay. They just called me complaining like big time. Yeah. Um, they said Coggins disease. Yeah, we have, a, we have Coggins. So we only have one animal right now, and we do have the Coggins for that animal. I could actually show you. Um, right you here. Can imagine how, because they're all, they all have oh, horses. Oh, I, under, I understand. And 100%. I rent it to them too. I understand. And they said once it's on the property. But this is our, this is the Coggins right here. It's up to date. It was pulled um, last and week. That's the one that you have. Yeah, this is the animal that's in the trailer right now. Okay. I know there's no fences. It yeah. Would even though they would tell me you can't be on the property at all. Yeah. Can you go to the grass out there on the other end? That's all you'd have to do. There's no fences around it. I know it'd be harder if one got out. Um, they was, they're they're going to attack me if I don't, because this is where all the horses are right in here. You know, this is yeah, I understand. And if a horse got out, there you could catch them because the traffic is there. Nobody's going. You can see they don't drive fast. It's just yeah. both slow moving, and horses get out all the time during the fair. And no, I get it. Or get hit over there. I get it. I understand 100. That, that would be your safest bet because they are going to they're going to do something if I don't do something. I they get told it. Told me you had to leave the property. I said you can't tell me that. They've got a contract. They can be on the property up in the corner. Just keep your horses away from it. Yeah. There's been a lot of people calling, uh, complaining about us being here, saying that um, we're going to get all their animals sick by what we're doing over here. And he just came up and asked us if we can move just outside of the gated area. Okay. I got you. We have two months reserved here already. You have another one. Um, you just have to go over there. So how how would a refund work then? We could just give you the money back. You, you could just that would that would be awesome. That's that's I think what we're gonna do. All right. Yeah. So you're just gonna leave then? Yeah. Uh, the other truck is on the way right now to grab this trailer, and then we're just gonna be on our we'll way. Give you your money back. Yeah. Just call me. I appreciate I'm it. Sorry. It's all right, man. I understand. You got. You got People blowing I'm you up, probably threatening you. I, I, you wouldn't believe how many calls I've got already. So something very similar happened. Uh, the first buyout that we did, we were staged at the parking lot that we've parked at for the last eight years. And we were asked to leave um, because the people for the auction were complaining. And this is a, it's, it's a small big town where everybody knows everybody and they're all, they all just have it out for us. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what it comes down to. They don't like what we're doing because the auction says they don't like us. And that's really what it is. I mean, if people really knew what we were doing, I bet we'd have a lot more of them supporting us. But all they hear is what the auction tells them. So uh, we're gonna leave a little bit earlier than we had anticipated. Uh, Tawny and Jason are on the way back to hook up to the truck and trailer. Here we'll let them in, get hooked up and take off. We spent a lot of money to reserve the fairgrounds so we could use the rental of the fairgrounds. Folks found out at the auction, it was a trailer, that um, we were using the fairgrounds, basically demanded that we be removed from the fairgrounds. So this is how ridiculous and bizarre it is rescuing horses. Absolutely frustrating and infuriating 
that trying to save horses out of the slaughter pipeline is everyone's trying to push us out, don't rescue these horses. There's nothing they can do about the buyout program. They already tried to shut us down with that. We've still done the buyout program, even though today has not been what I was hoping. We've still rescued a ton of horses through the buyout program. And uh, we gotta go get the trailer because we unhooked it at the fairgrounds because we thought it would be fine because we rented the fairgrounds. One thing that's really frustrating for both Jason and I is we have gone across the nation working at fairgrounds and rodeo grounds on huge seizure cases and owner surrender days and like fairgrounds and rodeo grounds are where horse welfare and animal welfare organizations rely on renting to help animals in a significant way and here we're just parked in their parking lot rented it rented a legal it contract rented it had to get insurance uh -huh for this event and we're just parked here and the goal was not to use their facility, just move the horse in, into our trailers and wait. It's kind of what's been going on over here at Cookville though, like everybody knows everybody. And if you're not in their click, then they're going to make sure you don't get to do even anything. If, even if you rent a fairgrounds, this is discrimination against animal welfare. 100% discrimination. So we have everybody back here now. We have the truck hooked back up. Um, we are taking off, but really this is just discrimination against animal welfare and um, it's not right that they're asking us to leave. Uh, we've rented this place out. Um, we are well within our rights to be here. We have the proper paperwork for the animal that we did receive today and we have the proper documentation um, to be here. Uh, we have the dealer license. So really it's just, uh, he said it was people calling him, telling him that we couldn't be here, and it's just discrimination. So we've got some stuff to figure out, but we're going to hit the road. So we made it back to Horse Plus. We're gonna actually put this donkey inside the vet barn. He is pretty healthy, doesn't have any discharge from his nose. Um, he didn't notice any swelling in his lip nose or anything like that. I'm not a vet, so I can't guarantee that 100%. But he's gonna go in the back part of the, um, the um, vet barn there. And uh, hopefully he'll have his gelding operation soon and then he'll be good to go. Um, he didn't get uh, any contact with any other animals that we got up in quarantine and since we don't know what's up there We didn't want to bring him up there to potentially expose him My name is Angela and I am the shelter manager here at Horse Plus Humane Society. On a day-to-day -day basis, I make sure that everything is running smoothly and everyone has all the things they need so that they can do their jobs. I started volunteering for Horse Plus in 2018 as a gatekeeper and I'm so glad that I can be here. I love that Horse Plus is such a great organization that helps so many different animals and uh, it's a great place to work. Love all my employees. And um, I just love the mission. I wanted to work at Horse Plus because I support Tanya and Jason in their mission. And I'm just really thankful to be a, a part of the support staff here that can help that mission be accomplished. The things I do outside of work are, I have eight children and three and a half grandchildren and we have a new grandbaby on the way. Uh, we have a major that we adopted from here and we have cats and a little chihuahua. So um, my family and my little pets keep me very busy. My favorite animal, um, I love my cats and my dog and my horse, but if I ever could have an, an eagle, I, I, don't, I just love eagles, always have since I was a kid. I think just the way they're so majestic and fly, 
Um, they're just such beautiful creatures. We have an adopter coming in a few minutes. She is interested in looking at all the available puppies we have out in the intake barn. So when she gets here, we will go out and we'll see who she likes and who bonds with her and then hopefully someone will get adopted today. He's it. Yep. He's it. That's the one. You it literally spoke to me, so. I totally get it. You're going with me. Yes, I know. I know. I'm sorry. I can't take all of you. I'm not going to look down. I'm not going to. Congratulations. You are now the proud owner of Duke. Here's all of his paperwork, and you can go ahead and move this photo over to Found Love. Awesome. She got brought in, I guess, around the same time as um, the adoption appointment that we had going on. She's a stray. She's been hanging around this lady's house for a couple of days. Um, and she noticed that she, she's very matted, as goes with long-haired cats if they're not cared for properly. Um, but she has this nice big hole on her neck and there's a bunch of matted hair around it. Um, so it's hard to tell if she was attacked, uh, got stuck on something, or if her mat being so thick, if it got caught on something and her freaking out, trying to release herself, ripped the skin open. Um, she is a very sweet girl. She's very scared and doesn't feel good. Um, so what we're going to do whenever we get a chance today is we're going to evaluate her neck. We're going to clean it up, most likely put a cone on her and some medicine and see how she goes from there. But so far, just looking at it, it looks like, um, it's like a superficial wound. It doesn't go too deep. There's no signs of any puncture wounds. So she should heal rather nicely. Oh, holy moly. You're a big girl. You look so small in your town. But we named her Meadow. Very sweet girl. I know. Where's your boo-boo? There it is. Yeah, she's got, I'm almost positive now, feeling her outside the towel, that that got caught on something and ripped the skin open. Yeah, let's find you a home, because if someone found you outside, they would think you were a skunk. We are gearing up to head back up to quarantine. We took in more than 40 horses yesterday and we were only able to triage a small portion of that. So we're headed up there. We're gonna have two vet and horse handler teams hopefully to try to make the process a little bit quicker to try to get through some more horses, but we're gonna intake as many as we can today. So the plan is that we're going to be running two separate teams. Uh, Kimberly is going to be working with Dr. Lydia and I'm going to be working with Dr. Gina um, on just doing the workups on these animals. Um, we're also going to be keeping track um, either me or Dr. Gina or Kimberly or Dr. Lydia will be keeping track on the clipboard of what's going on with each animal. And we're just going to try to cycle through these guys as fast as possible. Her partner lungs, her palpation of her joints on the left side, um, her cranial nerves on the left side. All oh, that seems good on the, on the left. I'm gonna move over and do the same thing on the right. Yeah. 
So we're doing radiographs on this mare right here. Dr. Gina and Dr. Lydia both noticed that there was something off about the um, left hind um, stifle area. Um, they know the more scientific terms behind that because they went to school for it and I do not. But they're gonna get that checked out and then I believe we're also doing a preg check on this mare and while we're doing a preg check, we're gonna get radiographs on the other mare that's over there. Well, surprisingly, I don't know what that giant bump is, but it, it feels bony, doesn't it? It's yeah. not bony. Hmm. Great. I'm not gonna lie, you guys. I've been a little spoiled by the size of the elephant rectum. It's a lot more space to work with. Ah, oh, her, she is so thin. So normally when you're feeling in a rectum, you, you don't feel bones easily. Don't think that she is based on uterine tone. I've got a lot going on in my plate this year, and uh, one of those big things on my plate is getting laws changed for horses, not only here in Tennessee, but on a national level. Um, and with all those duties, uh, I'm not able to be in, as involved in the actual hands-on. Um, we have such a great team, so Corey is now lead rescuer uh, for these type of things. and. Um, we have two awesome vets. I'm actually getting ready to um, do a, a pretty big meeting with a, a significant decision maker here in Tennessee. And I've got to get all the stuff ready and make sure it's prepared properly for that meeting. So if I had to do the rescue stuff and that, it would be too much. So it's just really great to see the organization growing to a point that I am able to try to get things changed on another level because we've been doing this for 20 years and I'm seeing the same issues that horses are facing. It, it hasn't changed. So the only way to make that really change is to be the person that has had 20 years of experience seeing it firsthand, going to decision makers and saying, look, this has got to change. So I am off to go get all that prepared and leaving these horses in the excellent hands of two veterinarians and our amazing staff and yeah. Gut sounds are great. Hi. Look at this horse face. <laughs> um, great, this guy looks to be in pretty good shape. He's a gelding. Looks like he's got a little bit of a fusion in that right hock. Other than being gigantic, he's been a very good boy. Tiny bit pushy. I don't know that we can even fit him through the chute. You wanna try? That's right. <laughs> Look at that. All right, 1,600 pounds, 1,651, wow. So I'm really happy. Um, this has been a really hard intake because we had a lot of horses in super critical condition. And this gorgeous horse um, seems to be in really good health. He needs his teeth floated. Um, and he's probably between 20 and 22, but he doesn't have any back pain. He doesn't have any obvious lameness. His heart and lungs sound great. And he's very, very sweet. So I'm super happy. Hope he gets a great home. His feet are in pretty bad shape. So we'll take a closer look at those, but he doesn't have any digital pulses or evidence of anything catastrophic going on. So we're gonna do all the things for him. We noticed that he was a little lame when we pulled him out of the chute, so I picked up his foot to pick it out. Um, his frog is really sensitive back here, and there's kind of a hole right here, so I'm curious to know what that might be. Gross old abscess stuff up here. I'm just trying to make sure he doesn't have canker or something other like catastrophic. That looked like an old abscess to me. Like yeah, kind of right I agree. It looks a little sensitive too. He's sensitive. Is your back okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm just trying to keep my pants up, so I'm not flashing everyone. Well, that's me. important too. You did have some like rocks when we picked it out. Yeah. I didn't see if the rock came out of that. Yeah. Um, I would say put him on a priority farrier evaluation list. 
I don't see anything earth shatteringly bad. Um, I think he's had very poor hoof care. Hold on, buddy. Um, I think that's good for right now, Corey. Thank you so much. Yeah, he definitely really, really needs. My draft horse that I had got abscesses regularly, but he did really well with treatment. Dr. Lydia did examine this horse. Um, we're not quite sure about the age, but we're gonna do, or she's gonna do a, uh, so they had dental in the future, and at that time, they're gonna get a better idea of how old she is. And at that time, they're also gonna do a preg check. As of now, we are giving her everything that she needs so that she can go out into a pasture. This horse is exhibiting some um, behavior issues. It's acting like it's trying to protect itself. Um, I would like to give it an opportunity just to kind of decompress here and the next time that we pull it in, um, we're gonna reevaluate its behavior to see how it's acting if, uh, and if it's had a chance to kind of calm down. Um, it was acting kind of weird towards me when I first walked in with it out in the back pen and then it settled down and let me get the halter on it. So I think that it has an opportunity to change its behavior and that we could actually do something with it in the training program. So we processed this young horse. He's only two and a half. He's neurologic, so he didn't have normal um, placement of his limbs and we had him down to take radiographs of his head and neck to check for wobblers but we moved him into a stall to wait to radiograph him and he's really rapidly decompensated um, he's been spinning and falling and he's very very abnormal and he's also been very aggressive um, he was running himself into the corner of the stall badly enough that he's now bleeding. So it's really unfortunate in such a young horse, but of the top three differentials, none of them are good differentials for survivability. Um, and he's really a danger to himself right now. So we're gonna move him back into the squeeze chute so we can better access him and give him some sedatives to calm him down. So we are wrapping up day two of intake. We got through quite a bit more. We are about to stop and finish up and go down and do the Coggins and stuff that needs to be done ASAP that has to go out. It's time sensitive. We got through a lot today and learned a lot of things and saw a lot of things. Nobody got hurt? Nope. Everyone's going home. Successful day, I would say. We have a really sad update for you guys. Um, Snowbird, our beautiful Cremelo mare with the fractured leg. Sorry, I get attached way too fast. We had to put her down. We weren't able to control her pain adequately. So we really tried extra hard with her because we were able to find out that she was pregnant. So that's always hard too. We had two lives to consider, but she wasn't able to rest comfortably. Um, she wasn't able to lie down or get back up. And so we were worried about her ability to be comfortable, but also her ability to full and be a mom. We are asked to help hundreds of animals every single year. We cannot do that without your support. Being on the front lines of animal rescue, we see things that break our hearts. It's through donations that we're able to say yes to not only horses, but dogs and cats as well. Every animal deserves a second chance. At Horse Plus Humane Society, the plus in our name is for every other animal besides horses that needs help and we help thousands and thousands of animals. But we can only do that through support from people just like yourself, donating to help us help the helpless. If we don't have support, we cannot save these animals. Please make a donation right now and be the difference for an animal in need.
I've been working very diligently with Jason and, and we're all trying to get this done. Um, there is a petition we created that has nearly 20,000 signatures. Um, I had a meeting scheduled today, but it got pushed back to tomorrow, which I'm thankful for because uh, printing off nearly 20,000 signatures is gonna take a minute. Um, but there are three laws that we are, we are asking Tennessee decision makers to get on the books. So the first one is that um, veterinarians should be the ones castrating horses, dogs, and cats. That's a given, it will protect them. Um, horses entering a certified animal control agency can come into that agency and receive their Coggins test and be held um, in place without the Coggins. Currently, only auctions can accept horses without Coggins, and then they make the purchaser sign an agreement that they'll hold that animal in place until the Coggins test comes back. Most, all those traders out there, they're not holding those horses. Lastly, um, that Tennessee adopts a law like Pennsylvania has, that if horse is uh, sick, um, it's, it's broken down. I mean, you watch when we go to the auctions and what these horses' conditions are, and it's horrific. And there's no law spelling out why, like this isn't okay and, and it can't happen. Um, so we're asking for two laws that are already on the books to be updated so they're not antiquated, and then one law to be introduced to protect horses. And pretty soon I'm gonna be printing a lot of signatures, which I'm so thankful for everyone who signed the petition. A lot of people wonder about petitions and do they make a difference? And I can tell you I have delivered petition signatures to decision makers before in the past regarding Big Lick and things. And when you bring a binder with 400 pages in it of signatures, it does make an impact. So got to get all that together, but um, we've got to change the laws and get horses protected. What's happening here in Tennessee is horrific and it's got to change. And not only is it horrific, you know, just within Tennessee, ar across the world, I think there's over 80 countries that have signed this petition. Across the United States, almost every state, if not every state, has signed the petition. People don't want the cruelty happening. And a ton of Tennesseans have signed the petition as well. It's time to change the laws and protect horses. Animal cruelty is not okay and it needs to stop. I am starting to print off 20,000 signatures. This is gonna take a while. Um, Keith has been put on light duty, so we have him archiving our old records. Uh, we have all the records from the beginning of time uh, in, in binders and um, we're digitizing them. Keith is gonna go through these signatures, I mean, there is, there's a lot. There's, it's gonna print off about 400 pages. So it is pretty significant. Um, and I'm gonna change, change uh, Keith's workflow here. So Keith, if you wanna like not proceed on to the next one. Oh, oh no. Oh, what's it doing? Okay. Um, 20,000 signatures is gonna be a lot. So um, we're gonna fill this binder up. I might go get another one. Hopefully it will stay there printing and not do anything weird when I'm gone. Here is your first stack and then the two papers that it, it spit out. So tomorrow, which technically we're closed, so we'll have a media team and everything, but I can tell you what's happening. Dr. Lydia, probably Dr. Gina and I will be meeting with one of the high up decision makers in Tennessee tomorrow going over these very important topics to help horses. Um, and I really appreciate everyone who signed the petition because each one of you, uh, three of your signatures will be with us tomorrow as we advocate for horses. We need a new printer. <laughs> it's terrible. Keep the taper going, yep. and 400 or so pages later, should be done. And you're doing a great job getting them in the fold in the fold folders. There, you have got this. I just finished 
uh, hole punching all the names, and I'm gonna hand it off to Tani now. There you go, Tani. Yay. We'll get it all done for you all. Thank you. You're welcome. Wow, so this is almost 20,000 signatures, and it's just, just small little rows and rows and rows of signatures that people have signed the petition and they want change. And I want to really want to thank everyone who signed it, especially all the Tennessee residents who signed it. Hopefully we can um, get the change that that needs to happen. And we'll also be giving them um, this little um, chart that we made. And it shows kind of like where horses end up at auctions. So like, you know, all these different horses, like we see so many horses at auction. It kind of gives a rundown of the horse falls through the cracks. This is where it goes. And then it can, they can just sit here cycling between auction and horse trader um, across the United States. Or, I mean, sometimes they will just die there. Um, if they go to one of the full circle life horse shelters, um, have veterinarians evaluate them. If they need the last act of kindness, that can happen. Um, and then with the buyout program, it's just intercepting them right from there. It's cutting out the auction completely, um, which there's a ton of disease at auction. So lots of amazing things to present these folks when I was in Washington, D.C. Um, they loved this. They're like, we know horses go to slaughter. We had no idea how they were getting to slaughter. And uh, we're planning going back to Washington, D.C. So I really want to get more stuff like this because if people don't understand what's happening, the laws are just going to stay the same. One of the laws Tennessee has is that, you know, anyone can castrate their own animal. And then further down in that law, um, operations known as castration are not to be regarded as practicing veterinarian surgery. This is not to prohibit anyone from castrating any wild or domestic animal, which I agree with the calculator. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's not permitting anyone from castrating a wild animal. So you're gonna go chase a deer down and castrate it? Like, the Tennessee has so many old antiquated laws and they need to be updated for the protection of the animals. <laughs> so, um, Randy, he is our litter control here in Homewald. He came and dropped, brought us a dog the other day um, and he asked me if we had cats and I was like, oh boy, do we. So him and his lovely wife have decided that they're going to adopt seaweed today. We are so happy. Congratulations to both of you. You are now the proud owners of Seaweed. Oh, thank you thank so you. much thank for giving you. her a loving Oh, you you're welcome. This is Boone. He was one of two that were thrown out of a car this week. On Monday, I was called by a friend's daughter and went and picked up him and his brother. His brother had gotten hit by a car, so our vets did have to put him down because he had some severe injuries. Well, I took this one home that night and my family fell in love with him, so he's going home with us this weekend. He's gonna be our new puppy.